In this video, you will learn few things about the display range, also called the axis range or the display settings of the graph. And you will also learn some of the associated features. This is the graph of a mathematical function between x and y. As you can see that y is a function of x and y equals square root of x plus 4. So we will be plotting this graph. At the end of this video, I will show you how to create a data file to plot any mathematical function. In most cases, however, this data file is not required because we can put this mathematical statement. This is the statement square root of uh, x plus 4. So we can put this uh, statement or this expression direct into add plot statement, which is the statement for plotting graphs. So therefore, we don't need any data file. But in some situation, you might want this to create this data file just in order to show to someone or as a teacher, you might want to show this to your students. So we will learn quickly at the end how to uh, create this file using Excel formula. So it's very simple. But uh, the main video is about how to change these display ranges and display settings, which most people don't use. But you will see that by changing these settings, the look of the graph completely changes. So let me explain you uh, first this code, which I have written already here. It's a very short code. I want to keep my programs very short, neat and clean so that you can understand and you don't have to bother about irrelevant code in the program. So this is the least amount of code which I could have put in this program. So we are starting with the, a class and we are using only two packages, ticks and PGF plots. This statement is just to use the latest version of PGF plots, which is this one. Begin document, then we are using this uh, figure environment from this point up to this point. Then we have to use uh, this ticks picture environment. And in the text picture environment, we have to plot our graph. And then we are using this axis environment. And in the axis environment, we give options for data ranges for X label, Y label and title. So this is one focus of this video, axis option. And the second option is within this axis, we have add plot statement or add plot command, which actually plots the graph. So we will see what options we can put here to change the look and feel of the graph. So these two uh, options we are going to discuss mainly in this video and then we create a data file at the end. So let's get started. So if I uh, plot this uh, uh, at the current stage and you see what how it looks like. So I just compile this. This is the current state of this graph. We have a box plot and we have a caption which is coming from the figure environment. And then we have uh, this range, X range and the Y range and the title of the graph. The line is very thin. And as you can see here that we are not giving any option about the domain. What should be the domain of the X axis? And we are not giving any option to display the graph, which we can do using the X minimum, Y minimum, X maximum and Y maximum keywords. But we are not using any of this in this option. One thing you should note here is that in this add plot expression, we are using a square root SQRT, which is actually a formula to calculate the function values. But in the caption, we are using backslash sqrt which is a command to put a square root symbol so this is a, a, a minor thing but you should uh, note this so this is our graph of uh, y equals square root of x plus 4 now let's have a look of the same graph in a calculus book so this is a book if you type this uh, functions graph pdf in google you will get this uh, pdf book written by these guys from university of sydney in 1997 so on this page 6 of 77 of this uh, pdf document we have a graph of the same function y equals square root of x plus 4 and if we compare this with our graph our graph looks different this is because pgf is op trying to optimize this graph, trying to keep it in the center of this box. This is not always the best way to present the graph because for scientific uh, representations, you want the best possible presentation of the graph, which depends on what you want to show. So now let's again look at the X range of this graph. The X range goes from minus four to plus one and the Y range goes from zero to roughly two. While in our case, PGF plot has taken 
the x range from minus 4 to something 5 and the y values are from 0 to 3. This is because we are not giving any instructions on how to plot this graph. But now we want to get a more control of this graph and we want to make a graph which looks closer to this shape. The purpose of this exercise is uh, to show you various features. We don't want to get exact this graph. It's not required because our graph is correct. But I just want to show you a few features. So therefore I'm using this example. So let's see how to do that. So the first thing is we want to give the domain of this graph from minus 4 to 1 so that we can get these values from minus 4 to 1. So what we do here is domain option is in the add plot options. So we put comma and then we say domain equals minus 4 colon 1. So this is the way we give the domain. So it means that PGF will take the values from minus 4 to 1 and it depends on the PGF how many values uh, PGF wants to take between minus 4 and 1. That is called the how many samples. So let's first plot this. And now this is the graph between minus 4 and 1. Now the plot is in the correct range if we compare it with this but still that display range is different. Here if I want to see how many uh, sampling points PGF plot is using I can put a comma here and put mark equals asterisk. So it will put an asterisk at, at every sample point. So now if I recompile, you can see that these many points, you can count it, but it's roughly 15 or 20 points. PGF plot is taken to plot this graph. We can have a control on this as well. And uh, you look at uh, the smoothness of this graph and uh, now you will see when I decrease the number of samples, you will see the difference. So this plot, if I decrease the number of samples to let's say five uh, samples, so this graph will not continues like this. It will be some sort of uh, a combination of small straight lines. So let's change the samples first. So we can change the samples here by just using samples equals five command, recompile. Now you can see that with five samples, the graph looks like this. So this is a combination of straight lines, no smoothness in this. If we increase samples to 50, and now the graph is much more smoother. Put few samples, you get straight line type of thing. If you put more sample, the graph is more smooth. So this is one thing, you are controlling the domain and the sampling. Now if you compare this again with this figure, we have to play with the x minimum and x maximum similarly y minimum and y maximum values which is called the display settings or the axis range of the graph so let us say i put from minus 5 to 1 on the x and minus 1 to let's say 5 uh, to keep the thing simple on y so we will get approximately same shape so in order to put these uh, parameters we have to go to axis options and we can put options x minimum equals minus 5 comma x max equals 1 comma y minimum equals minus 1 and y max equals 5. So now this graph should look like uh, closer to the uh, graph in the book. As you can see that now we are much closer than the graph in the book. So we don't need these marks now. So I just delete this marks option. It doesn't look good. If I compile it now and now as you can see that the line is very thin and we want a thicker line. So in order to change the thickness, what you need to do is you can put an option in this axis and you put every axis plot slash dot append and then space style and equals now here you have many thicknesses available and these thicknesses there are uh, six or five thicknesses available and which are called uh, ultra thin very thin semi thick thick very thick and ultra thick so let us uh, put ultra thick And now you get this uh, ultra thick thickness. And now if we compare this with the graph in the book, the only thing differ is this uh, axis lines. This graph has axis lines while we have a box. So in order to get axis lines instead of the box, the option you use is axis y line and axis x line. So axis y lines equals center and axis x line equals middle. 
So these are the options which you use in order to put the uh, axis lines in the center. So if I recompile, now you can see that uh, we have a beautiful graph which looks uh, closer to the one in the book, this one. So if you compare this graph from the one which we got in the beginning, you will see that there, there are significant differences in the way this graph look. And these things are uh, more uh, visible in 3D plots because in 3D plots, sometimes you might miss the important information if you are not using these ranges properly. Now the last thing is how to uh, make a data file. So if you know how to use Excel formulas, you don't have to watch this video after this point, but uh, for some students it might be useful. So now I will show you how to get a data file uh, instead of this expression. So let's assume that we have to find the data file for y equals square root of x plus 4. So the simplest way is open an Excel file and in the first column we want the value of x and in the second column we want the value of square root of x uh, plus 4. So since I want to plot the values between x and square root of x plus 4, so square root x plus 4 and I want to take values from minus 4 to 1. So minus 4 is my starting value for x. First let us calculate x plus 4. So this is x plus 4 column. In this column I will say equals the x. I will just click on this column. So it will take the value of C5, the, the, the number of this cell, the name of this cell and I say C5 plus 4. So this is my first entry. Then now I want values of x from minus 4 to 1. But what should be the increment? I have to decide. So let's take the increment of 0.2. So I would say this equals, click on this cell, plus 0 0.2, which I want to take the increment. So this is my next value. Now you put your cursor here and then when you hover your cursor at this dot, this plus will appear. You just drag it until you see 1. So roughly if you click here, this is 1.6. So just move a little bit back. So this is 1. So now we have our x values from minus 4 to 1 with an increment of 0.2. So this is basically zero value. This value is x plus 4. Now you can do the same thing on this column. Just drag it like this. Now we have these two columns. Now the third thing is we have to calculate the square root of x plus 4. So put your cursor here in the first and equals sqrt. Now we are using the formula. When you put equals it means excess things that now you are using the formula instead of the simple text. So use this formula here and in this formula we have to give which cell we want to get the square root of. So square root of this cell then enter and square root of 0 is of course 0 but now if we drag this it will calculate the square root of all these values and put it in the corresponding cells. So if I drag it like from there to there so now I've got the square root x plus 4 values for all this. So now what you can do, you can simply save this file as a text file and this is your data file. So for example, file, save as. So let us say this is our sqrt function, sqrt.1. So instead of the Excel sheet, we want to save it as a text file. So just text uh, extension .txt. So this is our file. So just remember the name sqrt-1, save it. And now in our LaTeX program, instead of this square root of x plus 4, we can use the option table first here and then we put the file name which was sqrt-1.txt. And if I compile now, and as you can see that now we are plotting from our file. So if you look at this data file which we got from the Excel, you will notice that it has three columns. But this table always uses first two columns to plot the graph because it's a 2D plot. Add plot is a 2D plot command. Add plot 3 is 3D. So therefore it takes only first two columns and ignores the third one. It also ignores the uh, title of these uh, uh, columns because these are the variable names. So this is how you can uh, generate a text file or a data file and you can plot from that data file. So I hope that you find this video useful.